Over the past few months, we've seen things cool off in markets across the country. And now with winter setting in, everyone's wondering, is this just a little slump or the start of something bigger? After all, we saw how quickly things turned last year. The market tanked over the winter before rebounding big in the spring of 2022. This year, many are questioning this magical recovery and now concerning developments are causing panic in many areas of the country. A shocking new earnings report just dropped from America's largest home builder, DR Horton, that reveals some of these details and it starts with a rather surprising red flag. But before we break it down, we first need to start with a bit of history. To understand this coming winter, we have to understand some things about last year. You see, in the summer of 2022, just as home prices continued to exceed all expectations, things rapidly took a turn for the worst. According to Zillow's Home Value Index, the market began plummeting that September, with the average home price falling by nearly 2% in the months that followed. While that may not seem like much, it was actually a decline that was significantly worse in pace than the initial moments of the 2008 crash. In some markets like Austin, these price pains were very serious. For example, from September to February of 2023, an average Austin home lost $50,000 in value, horrifying peak buyers. Patient sellers waited, and in the spring of 2023, there was a shocking turnaround. Seemingly out of nowhere, the buyers returned and the prices surged. By the summer of 2023, the Zillow Home Price Index had returned to its previous peak. And the housing bears were crushed once again. The crash was called off out of nowhere. Now as we enter the winter season again, we are once again seeing a similar repeat. A slowdown is starting. While it may not be apparent in the Zillow index, there is a clear change in the market that will surely show up in the data in the coming weeks. Prices are once again coming under pressure, and now the question everyone is asking is simple. Are we going to see this pressure relieved in the spring, or is this the start of something bigger? Something that will finally bring real home prices back in line with the 100-year average. To help us understand the coming months, we turn to America's largest home builder, DR Horton. Horton just released its earnings call, and it's packed with information and hints about where things are going. And one of the most important pieces in this fresh release is found right here. This is Chief Financial Officer Bill Wheat, and what he says is basically that DR Horton and other builders benefited from a stable interest rate environment for the last four to six months. Since the start of the summer, the 30-year rate has hovered in the same area, slowly rising from 6.79% to 7.79. While that is high, it's pretty stable when you compare it to 2022, where we saw some incredible movements in the MBS markets. That year, rates went from 3 to 7%, which was pretty much unheard of. Now, because they were stable this year, the buyers were more inclined to buy, and sellers like Horton could use the benefit of rate buy-downs in a more pronounced way. On top of this, the industry was boosted by falling lumber costs, which is one of the primary expenses builders have when developing new sites. Now, when you take these things into consideration, you can see why people are starting to worry about this upcoming year. You have to ask yourself what positive news could possibly help this market go further in 2024. The majority of the cost benefit from the improvement in lumber costs has already been realized in the near term. Rates are stable and buy downs are plentiful. The positive factors that contributed to a great report in Q4 may not be sustainable and external factors like rising interest rates and ongoing incentive use could poise challenges for the market in the upcoming quarter during 2024. What I'm essentially saying is that the positive news has already been baked into these prices and what else is left that could go right. From here, we are standing on a cloud and there doesn't seem to be much fuel left to push us further up. It would only take one bad event to cause a serious drop. For this to continue its upward trend, you need something that will push the envelope and most of it has already been used up. The dangers we face are tough to avoid. We need employment to stay steady, rates to stay steady, lumber costs to stay steady, and with so many storm clouds in the distance, the probability that 2024 stays sunny is getting slimmer by the day. Now, to be fair, it's not all bad news. For builders like Horton, this market actually gives them a unique edge in the grand scheme of things. At the end of the day, they are a new home builder, keyword there being new, and because of this, unique constraints have emerged following the events of 2020. Horton and other builders are actually thriving from a stock price perspective. 
For example, Horton stock has gone up 300% from the 2020 low. When compared to the S&P 500, this means it has outperformed the benchmark by 3x. And this is no accident. From the same earnings call, we can see that CEO David Alut highlights some of these factors. The most important being low inventory. Because there are so few existing homes out there, the difference in price between a new home and a crummy old one is actually pretty thin. So thin that in a lot of places, it makes more financial sense from a month-by-month -month basis to purchase a brand new home. When you include the reduced maintenance costs, renovations, and rate buy-down, for many people, it's a no-brainer. That means that new home builders like Horton have been able to capture a much bigger pie. Previously, new home sales made up only about 10% of the market. Today, that share has grown to one-third. This heightened involvement of builders in the housing market has led to a surge in their stock prices, showcasing improved performance on paper. However, a critical question arises. Is this surge a sustainable shift or just another cycle destined to revert to historical averages? The current scenario is characterized by new and existing homes essentially costing the same. When the historical spread between these two categories reemerges, a pivotal shift is anticipated. In the likely event of this spread resurfacing, it's plausible to anticipate a decline in existing home prices while new homes reclaim their premium status. Notably, new home prices are traditionally positioned at their upper limit and companies like DR Horton excel in adjusting prices to expedite inventory movement. If the current affordability threshold has already been maxed with these price points and a return to premium status for new homes is imminent, a pragmatic assessment suggests that one of these dynamics must yield and in my perspective, it is poised to be existing home prices. In essence, we find ourselves at a crossroads. Either we are at the brink of a new paradigm where the cost of new homes aligns with that of old ones, or we witness a return to the conventional dynamic where one of the two experiences a significant upheaval. The rationale behind this projection is grounded in the inevitable realization that opting for a half-century-old residence at a 500 k price point becomes increasingly impractical when compared with the option of acquiring a modern, aesthetically appealing new build for the same cost. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, and let me know in the comments below what you think of this new dynamic between old and new homes. Are you electing to buy new, or is the existing market still on your radar?